May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Hello, welcome to our recorded service from the Congregation of St. John the Baptist Church in Ashley on this the eighth Sunday after Trinity. And we've started today's recording with a link to our actual service, uh, which took place last week. Um, so everyone is most welcome to join us for that 9.30 Eucharist service. It is all socially distant and we would encourage everyone to wear face masks. They will be compulsory from next week, but it is up to you if you want to wear one this week. So we do look forward to see, seeing you in church where you'll receive a very warm welcome. So Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your, name. your praise. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments and through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The reading is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. When Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they mm -hmm. followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion from them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go to the villages and buy food for themselves but jesus said they need not go away you give them something to eat they said to him we have only five loaves and two fishes bring them to me then he ordered the crowds to sit on the grass and he and taking the five loaves and the two fishes he looked up to heaven and said a blessing then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and they gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were satisfied, and they took up twelve baskets from the broken pieces that were left over. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. So we've just had a reading then from St. Matthew's Gospel, a little earlier on. Matthew had given a, a parable of the mustard seed, you know, how God's kingdom uses small, insignificant things, uh, for greater things, you know, a tiny, tiny mustard seed and a great big bush to which all the birds of the air gather around. Um, and we move on from there to our, our, our reading. And Jesus had gone out to a lonely place. Well, I wonder why. Well, Herod had killed his cousin, John the Baptist. Now, if two lads were dropped into an occupied country and uh, they were uh, aiding the resistance movement and the authorities came and, and captured one of them and interrogated them. The other, the first thing he'd do uh, would be to clear off to a, 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 a safe place where they wouldn't be found that quickly or easily. And so naturally Jesus, he goes to a remote uh, lonely place out of uh, Herod's view as it were to reflect and to pray. But uh, he's gathered a following and the crowds 
uh, follow him, they gather around Jesus, many of whom were sick, and he teaches them the heals the sick. And getting towards the, the end of, of the day, naturally, they're hungry. And uh, so the disciples say, well, what are we going to do with this lot? Yeah, you know. Uh, and Jesus says, send them away. So, but there's no corner shop. There's no local co-op uh, they can go and get a, a roll from. They're hungry. It's late. But remember, Matthew's uh, the parable, what does God use? He uses small things, small people, insignificant things, more insignificant than you might imagine. Well, he said, what have you got there? Well, uh, they have five loaves and, and two, uh, two fish. But for 5,000 people, you must be bonkers. to actually going to feed this that way. Just that. So today, we have the miracle of the five loaves and, and two fishes. The people, what they saw, what the disciples saw, is Jesus takes the, the gift. He blesses them. They hand out, they share them, and they add to their heart's content. Strange, huh? Very strange. Hmm. Well, it anticipates uh, for, for Christians down the centuries who hold these to us, well, our meal in church. It's called the Eucharist, which simply means uh, a, a thanksgiving. Again and again, the material is so very, very small, a tiny little uh, a host or, or, or wafer, very, very small, a sip of wine. Again, the physical material is so small, so insignificant, uh, you may think, ah, doesn't God use small things, insignificant things, to achieve the growth of his kingdom? Well, our good news is that we too can be nourished. It's that problems. We can be led, we can be fed by Jesus, who says he is the living bread. He demonstrates our, what our God does to feed and nourish his people. But often small and significant, insignificant things the small and insignificant uh, uh, events. So, come see what goes on at 9.30. See if you can see any connection between the small the insignificant things and the miracle of what Jesus can do, because God's kingdom, not this kingdom, where big is important. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we pray today for your church, carrying a gospel of forgiveness and freedom, which is so much needed in our world. Thank you for those with a gift for sharing this good news in evangelism. Thank you for those with a gift for sharing this good news in the way we live. Give us the courage and willingness to be your witnesses in ways that are generous and respectful and which come from the overflow of our love and delight in you. Fill us with your love, so that the world may believe. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> we pray today for countries where there is COVID-19, which is most of the countries in the world. Some of these countries have many other problems too, where peace is very fragile, or there is war, hatred, violence and famine. May hearts that have been darkened by violence, discover a different light, a better way. We pray for the possibility of a vaccine and different ways to treat COVID-19. May countries be willing to negotiate rather than try to steal and fight. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we pray for spiritual health and welfare of our community and for all those working hard to help others, particularly at this difficult time. We give thanks for our benefice and for all the four churches and their congregations. We give thanks for our leaders guiding us today and during the coming week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are going through times of trouble, full of friends, we know you to be Lord and healer of your broken world, and we ask you to touch with your generous love 
all those who are on our hearts today because of their special need. May your love flood their lives with hope and healing in spirit, mind and body. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Hear us. Finally, Lord, into your hands we commit those who have run the race and now have gone to their reward. May your light shine upon them forever and for our, our lives be richer because of their memory. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Keep us, Lord, in the joy, simplicity and compassionate love of the gospel. Bless us this day and those who have committed to our care, that you have committed to our care, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. The poem I'm about to read is by Ellen Steiner Rice. Give thanks for the blessing God has shown for man cannot live by bread alone. He lived in a palace on a mountain of gold, surrounded by riches and wealth untold. Tasteless possessions and treasures of art, but he died alone of a hungry heart. For man cannot live by bread alone, no matter what he may have or own. For though he reaches his earthly goal, he'll waste away with a starving soul. But he who eats of holy bread will always find his spirit fed. And even the poorest of men can afford to feast at the table prepared by the Lord. Let us pray. God, go with us on our journey of faith. Revive us when we grow weary. Direct us when we go astray. Inspire us when we lose heart. Reprove us when we turn back. Keep us travelling ever onwards, a pilgrim people, looking to Jesus Christ, who has run the race before us and who waits to welcome us home. So go in the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of God. Amen. Amen. Amen.